So let's start with a quick recap. Okay. So we started treating psi, which was um, the field obeying Schrodinger equation as a classical field and the Schrodinger equation as a classical equation of motion. Okay, So, that is what we did. So, we regard psi as a classical field. Okay, which was the and regard your Schrodinger equation as a classical equation of motion. Okay. And then we wrote down the action of the system which will give Schrodinger equation as the equations of motion. And our action was this. So, you get S is equal to dt d cube x psi star okay and we had in the in this round brackets the entire schrodinger equation the left hand side of the schrodinger equation t over delta t minus the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian of um, single particle quantum mechanics ok. Sorry. T. Okay, that is what we did and remember the Hamiltonian was um, this minus h bar square over 2 m where m is the mass of well let us not say anything now because we have um, changed the description. So, I will be confusing you by saying mass here plus v of x. Okay, so, um, we had a potential in the problem okay. and then we derived equations of motion using delta s equal to 0 and that treating psi star and psi as independent um, variables we found that the equation of motion was what we wanted I mean, that is not surprising that is uh, how we constructed things. Okay, and let me um, say here this quantity in square brackets. Okay, I forgot to put a bracket here. The quantity within square brackets is called Lagrangian density. Okay, it's denoted by curl L. Okay, Lagrangian density. Okay, that's what you have within the square brackets. Then if you integrate the Lagrangian density over all of space, then you get the Lagrangian. Okay, that is your Lagrangian. Okay. And when you integrate the Lagrangian over time, you get the action okay as let me write it a little bit nicely 
direction. Okay. Now you see here, S is actually a, a functional of psi. You see, these are um, integration variables, so dt and d cube x. So, you are integrating over the entire all times and all space. So, that is gone anyway. Uh, S does not depend on what t is and what x is because th that is integration variables. It depends on psi and psi star. Okay. So, if you specify a field configuration, meaning if you take the entire uh, all space and you know, uh, tell what is the value of psi at each point of time. Okay. So, at each point in space and time, you should say how big psi is. I mean, in this case, it is complex, so you have to tell both psi, real part of psi and complex part of psi, but you have to tell at each point and at all times. If you specify that, okay, then you can calculate the action. If, if this changes, you get a different value of the action. Okay. So, S is dependent on this entire specification of psi, what is psi throughout. Okay action depends on it. So, S action is a functional of psi. So, that is what we are uh, making more um, you know, specific here. We will come back to uh, functionals in more detail later, but for now we make this note. Okay. And we also okay. we also wrote that psi uh, as a linear sum over the wave functions of the Hamiltonian, okay, this small h, because the wave functions form a complete set, we can write it. So, I wrote earlier a n of t uh, u n of x. Okay. And of course, as I mentioned last time, this is a system of infinite degrees of freedom because you have uh, n runs from 1 to infinity. Okay, you have to specify infinite number of a's to specify psi. Okay, that is good and we also said that a and r the generalized coordinates that describe this system. So, they are the dynamical variables of your problem. Okay, now, if a's are the dynamical variables of, variables of my problem, I would like to write down my Lagrangian, my action, Hamiltonian, everything in terms of these A's. Okay? And that is what I am going to do now. Okay? So, I will use this decomposition of psi and express everything in terms of the dy uh, dynamical variables A. So, let us go to the next slide. Yes. Okay, good. So, let us let me write it down here again. So, your psi, let us go to Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is integral d cube x psi star, okay, here. So, d cube x psi star and this piece, okay. So, I am going to substitute uh, in this here, in this part, this decomposition of psi. That is what I am going to do now. So, here is psi star, but psi star is um, u m instead of n, I am writing m. Sorry. Uh, So, what is psi star? Psi star is m a m of t u m of x, but it is a psi star. So, there has to be complex conjugation here times. So, that part I have taken care of psi star and then in the bracket uh, we have i h bar 
del psi over del t <coughs> okay time dependence is only in the a piece now i am writing psi not psi psi okay del psi over del t so u m will remain outside and you will have del a n t over del t okay let me try to write it a little neatly it looks horrible I will use a different index n, I will not use m, del a n t over del t and you have u n of x, okay that is correct and I should sum over n, okay that is i h bar del psi over del t, then I have minus h bar square over 2 m, okay. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Um, no. Minus h. Okay, minus h. So let me put a bracket here. It will be easier. Minus h by minus h bar square over two m. Then we have um, sorry. I, I don't need to do that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so minus. Uh, we have. Let's go back. H acting on psi, but psi I have expressed using a and u. U are the wave functions of the Hamiltonian H. Okay, with uh, eigenvalues e n. So when H acts on psi, it will act on u n. It will give us e n u n, and of course a is already there. So what I will get is this. Let me write down E n, you will have U n and you already had A n of t. Okay? That is what we should get and everything looks fine to me. Okay, Let us uh, collect some terms. Mm. Yeah. So, first of all uh, note that del a t over del t same as d a over d t. Okay, there is no distinction because a is a function of t only there it, it does not have uh, some other dependence. Uh, I mean, you can think you can look at this in more detail it is del over del t plus del over del x. Okay, into dx over dt. So that's what it is. But if you put a function a, which depends only on time, this piece is zero, right? Because it's a partial derivative with of a thing which depends only on t. So this is gone, and that it's clear that what I'm saying is correct. So you get the following. You get summation over n, summation over m, um, let me collect u n and u m. So, you get integral d cube x u m star of x u n of x okay, times i h bar d over dt which is a n dot okay i will use a shorthand notation minus e n a n that is correct okay let me let me not suppress time here okay good now I can use the fact that these wave functions are orthonormal. Okay, I can choose them to be orthonormal because they are uh, eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator, the Hamiltonian of uh, the single particle quantum mechanics. So 
which means that if they are orthonormal, um, then it means that if you in write this x u n of x, then this is just delta m n. So, when m and n are same equal meaning you have the same function uh, in here, then you get 1. If m and n are different, then because they are orthogonal you get 0, okay. uh, delta m n will be 0. So, that is the uh, condition we have which I if I put here. So, if I replace this piece with delta m n is something missing, something is missing, this piece is missing, yeah, this one is missing. I should write here a m star of t, okay, and this cross is, uh, yeah, it is there, I can remove it, but it is okay. So, this gives you a delta m n. Now, when you are summing over all m, okay, then it will, so what you get here is summation over m delta m n and you have a m star of t, okay, another factor does not depend on m, so it is fine up to here, okay, and when I sum it, it will pick up a n star. So, I get summation over n a n star okay, and then i h bar a n um, okay, let me write d a n over d t, there is no need for putting a dot, but it is fine e n a n t. So, that is what we get for the Lagrangian and that is good. So, we wanted to write uh, our Lagrangian using only the dynamical variables and which we have achieved now. We have only the a n's and a n stars. Okay, so, that is fine. Now, I would like to construct the Hamiltonian and if you recall uh, what Hamil how Hamiltonian is related to the Lagrangian, it is p q dot minus l. So, I have to construct further first the momentum conjugate to the dy dynamical variables a. Okay, so, that is what I am going to do. Okay, so, let us construct um, momentum conjugate to a n of t and how do you get that? So, if I define that conjugate momentum to be p n, okay, then p n will be del L the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot and what is q here? It is a n. So, it is a n dot of t. Good. And what is that? If I take this Lagrangian here and take a partial derivative with respect to a dot and this is the a dot, I get i h bar a n star and this term anyway does not contribute because there is no a dot involved in here. So, I get i h bar a n star of So, that is the momentum conjugate to a n. Now, I can construct the Hamiltonian that is straightforward. So, the Hamiltonian of this system now, I am not talking about the Hamiltonian of single particle uh, uh, quantum mechanics, I am talking about the Hamiltonian of this system and that I will write as capital H. Okay. So, how do I construct the Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian is p q dot minus l and you sum over all, all the coordinates. So, you have summation over n 
P n and what is Q? Q is your A. Okay, looking very ugly. P Q dot minus the Lagrangian. Okay, and what did we find? Uh, P n to be P n was I H bar A n star. So let's write that I H bar. A n star A n dot I am suppressing T now summation L minus let us go back and see what la the Lagrangian was. Um, so, this is I h bar A n star A n dot I h bar A n star A n dot. Okay, this is the same thing here. Let us write anyway. I h bar A n star A n dot and then go back. Then you have E n A n star A n okay. the minus sign minus E n A n star A n. Okay, that is nice. So, these two terms clearly cancel. This minus sign cancels and leaves us with summation over n E n A n star T A n of Okay, that is the Hamiltonian, it is a sum of infinite number of terms and each term is E n A n star A n, okay, that is the Hamiltonian we have found and as we wanted we have expressed everything now in terms of the dynamical variables A n. We are still at the classical level, everything is classical, my action is classical, Hamiltonian is classical, these are uh, not, not operators. Now, I want to quantize this theory, I want to make a quantum theory out of it. So, let us quantize and recall what we need to do quantization. I promote A to an operator, of course. A star or, or um, complex conjugation to Hermitian conjugate, okay. and and that's it. There is nothing. Um, of course, uh, we have to um, impose the competition relation. But of course, uh, the P also becomes an operator and then I impose maybe not here impose the competition relations which we talked in the previous lecture. Okay. So, that is what we have to do. Okay, and let us see. So, if I look at the competition relation, let us see what we get. Competition relation. So, A and P, if I take A n of t and p m of t okay, and calculate its competition relation. This will be uh, i h bar times the Poisson bracket and Poisson bracket has to be 1 because these are or, or delta m n because these are con canonically conjugate pairs. So, I get i h bar 
that is the prescription right that is the prescription of making quantum theory. Okay, so, this is what I have this delta m n is coming from the Poisson bracket. Now, something let us see let us see what p m was. So, I go back p m is i h bar a n star or p m is i h bar a m star which becomes a m dagger. So, i h bar a m dagger so, that i h bar factor I can pull out it comes out of the commutator. So, you have i h bar a n of t and you have a m dagger of t is i h bar delta m n and the factors of i h bar cancel on both the sides. Okay, These you can cancel. So, I can cancel them Okay, and you get the commutator between a n a m dagger to be delta m n. Okay, that is good. And what is our Hamiltonian now in the quantum theory? So the Hamiltonian of this system, okay, uh, this quantum mechanical system, which we have found by quantizing the uh, classical action, whose classical equations of motion are Schrodinger equation that Hamiltonian H is now summation over n E n A n dagger A n right. So, the Hamiltonian is let me write on the next page. So, the Hamiltonian of the theory is E n A n dagger A n of t. Okay, let us check perfect and um, remember what is what is E n? E n are the eigenvalues of uh, small h okay that is what E n is. So, that is the Hamiltonian of the theory and we see that this is a uh, this is something familiar right this is if you look at the ter each term like let us take the first term E 1 A 1 dagger A 1 okay. that is the that is the Hamiltonian of a harmo harmonic oscillator which has um, its frequency as E 1. Okay, or, uh, so, that is the harmonic oscillator that you have and what we see here is that your system is a sum of infinite number of harmonic oscillators okay, because n runs from 1 to infinity. Okay. So, the quantum mechanical system that we have got is a collection of harmonic oscillators an infinite number of them okay. and these harmonic oscillators are not talking to each other. You see there is no coupling between A 1 and A 2 there are no cross terms in this. So, it is always it is completely diagonal. Okay. So, there is no interaction between one oscillator and another oscillator. So, all these oscillators are completely free and this is a free theory. Okay. The, the system that I am uh, showing to you is a free theory despite the fact that we started with the potential term in the original original uh, action or uh, the Schrodinger equation had a potential. Okay. So, let us stop here. Okay, we will continue further in the next video.